All right, and then this next one will uh, is good. It's very informative for some of you guys if um, you're struggling with AIM. Um, I know that I haven't dialed this in myself for a long time, and I, I'm just standard and stock or, or uh, uh, default would be the right word. And the title for this video is, This Will Change How You Aim in Star Citizen Forever, A Guide for 317.2. And it's from Jonathan Winters. So let's check this out. It is, this is kind of what changed for me uh, when it came to PvP and kind of doing well in that content creator tournament uh, was when I went through with Moist Noodle and dialed in specifically this metric. Enhanced Stick Precision, or ESP for short. Today I'm going to be going over how this can help improve your aim and how to circumvent some of the cons that come with using ESP. First, let's go over its two functions. You have the degree slider and you have the curvature slider. The degree slider and regulates how, how many this degrees works. around the target you Understanding how this works, very important. You have before the dampening curvature starts to take place. The more degrees, the bigger the circle around the target gets, meaning the higher the number, the further away from your target that your crosshair can be before being affected by the dampening curvature. Wow, the that curvature was a very good example. So I think we should probably watch that again. So you guys get a really good understanding of what it is how does. much your movement slows down the closer. Uh, let's go back actually to right about there. Um, so what ESP does is it basically makes your joystick way like less sensitive when you're around the ship to kind of improve accuracy and bring it in line with mouse and keyboard accuracy. It's my understanding nowadays that the top pilots are actually using mouse and keyboard or the top pilot at least. And um, joysticks don't have the advantage that they used to be, but mouse and keyboard used to be back in the arena commander days so far and beyond uh, a massive advantage over joystick users that CIG implemented this in particular to try to combat that. And then I think it went way too far in the joystick direction. And now it kind of seems like a bit of a, uh, a bit more of a balance. I don't know if it's, I mean, it's definitely an assist, but the, the, it's not an aim assist as far as I understand, at least, and I'm sure Jonathan will, will explain a little bit more, but it's um, it's not an aim assist as if it'll bring your um, your crosshair to the target, although we do have, like, fixed assist that actually does do that as well, uh, but yeah, so. Target gets, meaning the higher the number, the further away from your target that your crosshair can and be smooth, before and being then when affected it go past by the, the damping circle, curvature. It just Goes. The curvature is how much your movement slows down the closer you get to your target. Meaning the yeah. more curvature I have, the more input I have to give to achieve the same amount of travel. Yep. Now that you know how these settings work, let's go over how to find the best ESP setting for you. Before we can start tweaking our ESP, we first have to find a curvature that feels comfortable for us to fly around in. Yeah. I usually recommend finding this value with the smallest, fastest craft that you can. If you okay. have a car to wall, that would be the best option. If not, an arrow would be just as functional but you don't want to try to find this curvature when using something big like a C2. Gotcha, the method okay. for this is very simple and it can be done on all your axes. That said, we'll only be covering pitch and yaw as that's the most important axes when it comes to aiming. Yes. The other things you can apply it to is things like straight forward, back, left, right, up or down. Really? Okay. Essentially what you want is a curvature that allows you to move in a way that allows you to be fluid. Oh, he's the just talking about joystick The goal is to find a value as close to 1.0 as possible. In this next clip, I'm going to have a comparison on me using 1.0 sensitivity versus 1.2 sensitivity. As you can see, when I use the 1.2 sensitivity, I have much more fine control over my lateral movements. As you try this out and test this for your own, I want you to keep two things in mind. First is that your sensitivity value might decrease the better you get at this game. Second is, depending on your controls, this level of accuracy may not actually be possible for you. Now that you feel comfortable flying your I think ship I'm around, like a 1 we can talk about ESP. I recommend entering Arena Commander and joining Pirate Swarm or Vandal Swarm. Just make sure to go into single player so that you can pause it by hitting escape and changing your settings. Let's get into the sensitivity curvature. First make sure that your degrees are set at the default of 8. As you aim at your enemies, I want you to do a circle strafe as you try to acquire on them. 
You may also recognize the maneuver as a skidded roll, a corkscrew, or just generally orbiting He's accurate, around. man. Holy if you don't know crap. how to do the circle strafe, I'll link in the description a video that teaches this technique, along with some other guides if you struggle with combat at all. What you're looking for is a value that allows your crosshair to stay on the pip without much movement at all. You want to be able to maintain a nice, steady, consistent aim. If you start to put your crosshair on the pip and you notice that you're overshooting, you want to raise your curvature value. Don't try yep. to guide yourself by undershooting, as that usually occurs more because of the ship's movements. If you can maintain your crosshair on the pip, and anytime you have to readjust the crosshair, you don't overshoot the pip, then you have found the curvature value that works for you. And again, we're trying to find a value as close to one. I also think you should probably record it and watch back. One is possible. Now that we've covered that, let's move on to degrees. You want something that gives you a smooth feel between on and off, as too quick of a snap is very hard to adjust to, and too slow of a change can be very detrimental to your combat. The goal here is going to be the same as prior. Where Which is interesting is I also noticed that he only is using lead pip, and I haven't seen him use lag pip, and I wonder uh, if that has any... Um, bearing on this trying to find the value as low as possible that works for us and again you should be trying to find this value with the fastest ship you have available we're going to be finding this value by doing snap aiming what i want you to do is aim your crosser away from the enemy then i want you to move it as quickly as you can from outside of target to Oof. the target pip if you find really bad. Trying this, that your pip feels unstable or that if you're overshooting too much then it's time He's to lower your degrees. Like crazy, if you can see. In short, the higher this value, the easier it's going to be to put your crosshair on the pip. But the greater the value, the more sluggish your ship will feel. Mm, the goal okay. is to be able to achieve a value as close to 1.0 as possible, while still allowing you to flick aim at your opponent and maintaining a steady target. Gotcha. The final thing we have to cover when it comes to ESP is the one con that is attached to it. This has to do with the distance relative to the opponent. I think for the flight or fight tournament, I was at six. Or something like that. If you're that. further away, it doesn't matter if your aim is slower. But the closer you get, the faster you need your aim to be so that you can turn around as you pass your opponent. ESP can slow you down in this aspect. This is where something like an ESP toggle is going to be extremely helpful. Mm, All you have to okay. do is go to your key bindings and find the ESP setting. Once you're there, just set it to whatever key you want. I advise picking something that's easy for you to click as you're fighting. Once bound, you'll be able to use it in two ways. You can either click it once to toggle it on or off, or you can hold it to temporarily toggle it. This is my wow, preferred okay. method of using it, as you don't want to accidentally turn it off and not realize so it you as you're fighting flick, someone else. Let go, you and don't then want to be taking your attention away from combat to check accurate. if it's either on or off. Ooh. On a final note, I want you to understand that I'm making this tutorial because I want you to understand how ESP works and how it can function for you. Even though I have some methods that I have found to work best for me, it's possible for you to find some things that work better. The main thing I want you to take from this tutorial is the understanding of ESP and how it affects your aim in the verse. If you want to see any more of my tutorials, I'll link them down in the description box below as always, along with any information about this video that I find people ask frequently. With all that being said, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm jumping in like almost immediately and I'm going to try this out now. That was a incredibly well done guide. Uh, again, Jonathan Winters, and there is the YouTube link there. That was really, really helpful. I definitely do want to get involved uh, with a little bit more PvP in Star Citizen. Um, come 317.2 live, I'm, I, I'll probably reach out to Avenger 1 for some training, hang out with Moist Noodle, do a little bit of training. But getting your settings kind of squared away before you ever get in there would be... Um, really ideal and that was the most helpful explanation i've seen for this in particular which is one of the most impactful things for joystick users so wow 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 thank you jonathan that was really really awesome and um i'm probably gonna watch that video four more times <laughs> as I'm, I'm working through this